Hey there. Welcome to episode 58 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and we're going to be talking about my toy collection today. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about just the new figures I've gotten in the past two weeks or so since I posted my last video. Um, I actually did post a video last weekend, but it wasn't um, labeled as a Mike's Collection. It was just some concert footage because I went to go see uh, a Canadian band called Rusty, who haven't been uh, playing together for 20 years or so, and they were one of my favorite like alternative rock bands when I was a kid, and it was really cool that they came back to town last week. So if, you're, uh, if you've heard of Rusty, I recommend you go check out my Rusty video. If you've never heard of them, I still recommend you check them out. They just put out a new album. It's good stuff. But anyway, uh, I'll get back to the toys. So for this episode... I've only got uh, four new toys to show you, so this should be a relatively quick episode. Um, I've had to slow down on the toy purchasing a little bit because, you know, we're only a couple of weeks away from Christmas, and yeah, I'm trying to get some Christmas shopping done. Um, although that hasn't stopped me from spending a little bit of money on myself. Um, I have bought myself a few Christmas presents that I probably won't let myself open until Christmas morning. Uh, like, I made an order... From Big Bad Toy Store um, and I also made an order from Super 7 because they had a uh, Cyber Monday sale on where they had all of their reaction figures if you buy five you get your sixth one for free and I'm a big fan of the reaction figures it's um these little guys that look like kind of five points of articulation they look like you know Star Wars toys of the 70s and 80s and uh, yeah it's just kind of fun to get these uh, these little things so this is one of the guys from Jaws. Um, most of my reaction figures I keep carded because one of the things that's so appealing about them is the vintage uh, artwork on the cards. And you'll see I've got a kind of a border of them pinned up along here. Some of the Masters of the Universe, uh, some Hellboy, and then some other random things like uh, Karate Kid and The Crow. Um, so yeah, I bought a little bit of a mishmash of those things from Super 7. Uh, I haven't got a ship notification yet though, and it's been... Uh, uh, just over a week now so hopefully I get that soon because I was hoping to get it at least by the end of the year because I'm okay with not giving it to myself for Christmas but um, one of my favorite things about the end of the year is making my year-end top 10 lists every year I post a uh, my top action figures of the year my top movies of the year my top uh, music of the year now this is my first year doing these video blogs or whatever um, so if you're curious about what my list looked like in past years, uh, as far as action figures go, you can go to my old blog, which is mikescollection.wordpress.com, and there you'll find all my uh, best of lists going back as far as 2012 when I started blogging. As far as uh, music and movies, I just did those on Facebook, but I'm happy to share them with you if you're curious. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing all those, and I think there's a decent chance some of these reaction figures could end up on my best of list for the year. Um, so I'm really hoping that they arrive before I post that video uh, the last week of December. Anyway, I don't really have much else to talk about, so let's just uh, get right into um, showing you my brand new figures. So here we go. Here is crosshairs inside of the packaging. Some unique character artwork on the side. And on the back you can see his alt mode, which is this, I don't know, Cybertronian minivan or something. Now here is Crosshairs outside of the packaging. And this is the first Crosshairs figure we've gotten since the original was released back in 1987. Now I never had the original figure. Um, I think I was already kind of getting out of Transformers a little bit at that point in time. Um, I was really hung up on the Transformers of the first couple of years. I think a lot of kids were those first two seasons that had Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, all that sort of stuff. Then the movie came out, and then a whole bunch of new characters were introduced, and it kind of turned me off a little bit. And so Crosshairs was one of those new characters that was introduced. And he was part of a, like a subline called Target Masters. Um, it was around 87, 88 that Hasbro introduced both Target Masters and Headmasters. Now, what the deal was with Target Masters, um, their guns were Transformers as well. So the original uh, Crosshairs came with this little red gun whose name was Pinpointer. And so he was a little robot and he flipped and transformed into Crosshairs' gun. 
Um, and the headmasters, same idea. The headmaster, the heads came off the characters, and the heads transformed into little characters as well. Now we've already seen Hasbro doing that. Um, they did a whole bunch of headmasters uh, in their last line, which was uh, I think Power of the Primes is what they were calling it. Um, but yeah, we didn't get much in the way of the target masters. So it's cool that we're getting some of them now. And even though I never had the original uh, crosshairs when I was a kid, I really did want one. And it was based on about one or two seconds of animation. Now, I, I actually thought it was from the new start of the show. Like uh, when season three started, which came out after the movie, they had some new animation to show off the new characters. And I thought that's where I remembered it from, but it might have actually just been for the uh, Target Master figures commercial where they had some animation in there. But I remember pretty vividly there was a scene where Crosshairs and Pinpointer are running towards the screen and then like Pinpointer flips up and jumps into his hand and he catches him like a gun and starts firing or something. Like I just thought it looked really cool. I really liked the look of this character and I thought, yeah, I want to get him. And I'm not sure why I never did. Um, I don't know if I ever saw the toy in toy stores or maybe I, re I got it and I realized when I saw it that it, the toy didn't look like the character I'd seen in that two second clip of animation. I don't really remember that per se. I just remember that animation. Remember thinking this guy was probably the coolest looking of all the new Transformers. But I guess I, I never really pursued him. But in the years since, since I've really got back into collecting Transformers, this was a character I always kind of hoped that they would uh, redo and that I'd have a chance to get at him. And here we are, just the very end of 2019. I just get this guy the other day. And yeah, I think he's pretty cool. Now I do want to talk about Crosshair's gun for a second. This gun is pretty cool. This big multi-barreled, almost looks like a missile launcher of some sort. It's a cool weapon, but it is not a target master. It does not transform into another little robot. I don't know why they didn't give him a new version of Pinpointer. I really would have appreciated that, and I think that would have added a lot of value to this character, and fans of the original would have really appreciated that. So while it's cool that he's got this big cool gun, I really would have preferred to see him with a Target Master. In recent years, Hasbro has given us a couple little Target Masters that have come with some various figures, and some you can even just buy individually for a few bucks. So here's a guy, for example and I can transform him into a gun. So here you see Crosshair is holding his Target Master Companion, which is just this, this little robot transformed into a gun. Um, this guy obviously doesn't match very well color-wise. Pinpointer was red. Um, so yeah, I don't think this would have cost Hasbro that much more to add one of these guys, so I wish they had. And like I said, you can buy some of these guys, you can buy some of these guys individually, um, I think they're overpriced for what they are, but I might actually, next time I'm at Walmart, if I see a red one, whether his name is Pinpointer or not, uh, I might buy one just so I can stick it in Crosshair's hands. Now, as far as sculpting and articulation go, um, this guy's pretty good. Um, like I spun around earlier and you noticed, um, I think he actually looks pretty good from the back too. He doesn't have a whole lot of like kibble hanging off of him. Like there's not a whole lot of obvious pieces that don't look like they belong there. He also doesn't have a bunch of hollow pieces like you'll see there. His forearms are a little hollow and stuff. But, you know, he doesn't feel really flimsy or cheap. And as far as articulation goes, like he bends at the knees and at the elbows and he spins at the wrist there. Uh, his head turns. You know, so he's got all the basic articulation you want. He's very poseable. Uh, but this is nothing we haven't seen already because this figure um, is just a complete repaint of the Ironhide from the Transformers Siege line that we got a couple of months earlier. So here you see Crosshairs with Ironhide uh, as well as with Ratchet, which is just another repaint of Ironhide. Now, it made sense for these two guys because in the very vintage uh, 1980s Transformer line and pretty much every line since, these two guys have shared a mold. The only difference being their heads where Ironhide kind of has this middle almost mohawk type, type thing and Ratchet has this little like visor or whatever over his head. So they changed the heads up for these guys, but the bodies were the same and that made sense. Now with Crosshairs, the original toy line looked nothing like uh, Ironhide and Ratchet because he was a Cybertronian vehicle 
and these guys were an earth minivan and an earth ambulance. Um, but for this whole siege line, which is supposed to take place on Cybertron before these guys came to earth and took on earth modes, these guys, Ironhide and Ratchet, were given Cybertronian modes. So if I were to transform them right now, they wouldn't look very much like their original versions. Whereas it actually works pretty well for Crosshairs. He still looks like some sort of, you know, Cybertronian off-road vehicle. And it looks pretty good. So the only unique piece on Crosshairs is the head. And I like this head quite a bit. You'll see it's got these kind of, almost like two pipes that looks like going into either side. I have his little breather there in the middle. And the look is actually faithful to how he appeared in the comic books, although he was sometimes miscolored in the comic books, um, as well as to how he looked in the cartoon. So that little animated sequence that I mentioned earlier, this is how he looked, although you, you didn't get a great look at him as far as detail go. But you could tell he was one of those Transformers that had a, kind of a full faceplate rather than a mouth and nose, like a humanoid face. But for whatever reason, the original toy and the original toy packaging featured a humanoid face, and that's the way he has appeared in uh, most comic books and stuff ever since. It's been based on the original toy. So I'm actually pretty glad that for this one, they went back and based it on the original look in the cartoon and the comic book, because it's my preferred look. And uh, yeah, I think it's a little more, more uh, unique. So there you go. It's crosshairs. I actually really love this figure, um, even though I got it the same year as Ironhide and Ratchet, and both of them were really good too. Um, I think Crosshairs is maybe my favorite of the bunch, mostly because his colors are so bright and bold. He's a character that we haven't gotten since 1987. He's a character that I've wanted personally for a long time, and yeah, I think he came together quite nicely. So there you go, Crosshairs. I recommend you pick him up if you can find him. So this is Spinister inside of the packaging. Character artwork on the side and on the back you can see a picture of his alt mode which is this helicopter right here. Now here is Spinister outside of the packaging. Now this um, Spinister is a Decepticon and he was also a target master in the original line. Uh, he transforms into a helicopter as you saw on the back of his packaging. Now, he was actually released a year after Crosshairs in 1988, um, but he originally came with two Target Masters, which is why he has two guns here with this figure. So he came with Singe and Hair Splitter. Um, now, just like with Crosshairs, unfortunately, these are just standard guns, and they're not even as cool as the gun that Crosshair came with. But yeah, he did not come with a Target Master, let alone two of them, which would have been pretty sweet. Now, uh... So the original figure came out in 88. Now we have had a couple of versions of him since, but nothing that's really uh, like done him justice um, and no real mainstream releases. Like for example, in uh, 2014, they released um, Nemesis Prime, which is kind of like the black evil Optimus Prime. And he came with a Target Master version of Spinister. So Spinister himself was a small character that turned into a little gun that fit in Nemesis Prime's hand. So that was kind of kind of odd. And then in 2016, um, the Collector's Club, which uh, I was never part of the Transformers Collector's Club, but I was part of the G.I. Joe Collector's Club. And I always subscribed to the G.I. Joe figure subscription service. Um, you can see a lot of those characters on my shelves in the back there, some of these subscription service G.I. Joes, which are very pricey. Basically what you did is you paid a monthly subscription and you got a figure uh, sent to you every month. And it was usually a figure that they had taken an existing figure and just kind of repainted it to create a new character. So in 2016, the Collector's Club gave us a new version of him. But what it was is they had taken um, this helicopter mode from the uh, Combiner Wars series. So this same mold was used multiple times. I think it was originally on Alpha Bravo who was a helicopter, part of the aerial bots. And this here is Vortex. He's one of the Combaticons. It was also used on Blades, the uh, Transformer uh, from the Protectobots, as well as two characters used for Victorion. So yeah, we saw this mold a lot, and I'm glad to see that Hasbro didn't just reuse that again. Instead, Spinster's got a brand new mold, so this is the first time we're seeing this. And I'm not sure who else they would ever use it on, so maybe it'll stay unique 
to Spinister, which would be kind of cool, because it's always nice when a character um, doesn't look like 10 other characters on your shelf. So as far as the sculpt and the articulation goes, um, he's very good as well. Like, the sculpt looks great. I really like his head design there. Um, the colors are a little garish with the pink torso, the purple arms, and then the abrupt blue legs. It almost looks like he's wearing blue jeans. But that is true to the original figure. Um, so yeah, he swivels at the waist, you know, kicks out at the thighs, bends at the knee. He's got foot articulation there. Shoulders, lots of range of motion, elbows, hands. No, the hands don't spin. Um, the head, left to right, up and down a little bit. So yeah, you can get him in lots of good poses too. Um, the uh, legs here, I kind of like how they have that translucent um, kind of glass effect because that is the cockpit of the helicopter on his legs, so that looks really cool. And I like how the, uh, the blades there just kind of sit on his back like that. You could, um, I'm sure, let them hang below, but this is the way he was intended. The blades come off the top there like that. And I kind of dig the look for this guy. So yeah, he's a pretty cool looking character. So as I mentioned before, I had kind of gotten out of collecting Transformers by the time the Target Masters had come out. So I never had the original Spinister. And unlike Crosshairs, there was nothing in the animation or the commercial that really stood out to me that made me want to buy this guy either. So this guy was not somebody I would have been interested in a couple of years ago. However, this is one of those characters that IDW really elevated with their comic books. They took all kinds of, you know, uninteresting Transformers, guys that nobody was really attached to, and they've made them all huge fan favorites. So characters like Swerve and uh, Chrome Dome and Rewind. Everybody loves those guys now when really they weren't all that interesting beforehand. And Spinister here is one of those characters. They made him, uh, so even though he's a Decepticon, in the comic books, the uh, the war between the Autobots and the Decepticons ended and everybody kind of went their own separate ways. And Spinister joined a group of former Decepticons known as the Scavengers. And they were really just a bunch of goofballs that went on these wild adventures. And at the time, when I was reading those comic books, there was no versions of any of these characters to collect, which was kind of a bummer. But in recent years, Hasbro has given us quite a few of them. So here you see Spinister with fellow scavengers, uh, Croc, and Flywheels, and Mistfire. So we're still missing Crankcase and Fulcrum. Uh, Crankcase is a character who has not been remade since the original vintage toy. And Fulcrum was actually a brand new character created for the comic book who we've never received a toy of. So hopefully we get those guys eventually. But for now, it's pretty cool that we have four of the six scavengers. So in closing on Spinister, I think this is a great figure of a great character. Um, fans of the original toy, I'm sure, will be pleased because he's much better than the original. And fans of the comic books, I'm sure, are stoked to get this guy because he was a pretty lovable character in the comic books. So yeah, brand new mold, fun colors, uh, and just a cool figure overall. So I recommend you pick one up. Now this here is the Marvel Legends Silver Samurai. Most Marvel Legends come in boxes, but um, this here is as part of the Marvel 80th anniversary. They've released some of these figures on vintage style cards. So this figure here uh, looks like how the Silver Samurai figure would have looked when it was released in the 90s based on the 90s X-Men cartoon. On the back of the package, you get a little bit of a bio on the Silver Samurai himself, as well as you get images of the other figures in the anniversary wave. Um, the only other one I have is Dazzler, which I would have showed you in a video a couple of months ago. So here is the Silver Samurai out of the packaging. He looks pretty cool. I just opened him up, so this is my initial assessment um, for accessories. He's got these two swords, um, which seems pretty apt. Um, they're pretty bendy rubber, so I was even worried trying to pull them out of the package that they were going to get a little warped, so just be mindful about that. Um, looks like he's got a little, I don't know if you'd call that a, a sheath or a holster or whatever, but it does look like he can slide both of his swords in there for storage, which is kind of cool. Um, 
I don't know a whole lot about this character. For one, he's mostly an X-Men villain. I think he's fought Daredevil and probably a couple other people along the way because he's been around for a long time. Um, but I've never really collected X-Men comic books. I think I maybe have a Daredevil a couple of issues where he fought this guy. But I don't know if he's ever crossed paths with Spider-Man or anybody that I can recall. Characters that I've collected on the regular. So, while he's a cool-looking character, um, he is kind of just what his name implies. He's a silver samurai. Like, he doesn't necessarily look like a superhero or supervillain. He just looks like a, uh, you know, a pretty standard samurai figure painted silver. Which is not a bad look, but uh, I just, yeah, I don't really have any attachment to this guy. Now, the sculpt on this figure and the paint job is actually quite nice. Um, I really like the the bright silvery plastic and the fact that there's a couple of different grays here, like the base um, color used on his legs and his arms and stuff there is kind of a darker gray, where the, uh, the rest of it, the armor, is kind of a little bit more reflective silver paint. And you see the head sculpt there looks really good. You can see his eyes, which are just pupilless white eyes peering out at you from underneath. Um, lots of little detail with the little rivets and stuff. They're all sculpted on there. As far as articulation goes, it looks like pretty standard for Marvel Legends. He's got the uh, double jointed knee you can see there. Oops. Of course, he moves at the ankles. Uh, he's double articulated at the elbow, so he can get a good, good range of motion with his arms there. Um, his head, I think the helmet hinders his movement a little bit. He can't seem to put his head back very far, so he does kind of look like he's looking down. And I don't know if there's any way you can really change that. But, uh, yeah, otherwise pretty cool. And he seems like he's got some height to him. Um, I imagine this character is supposed to be a little larger than your average uh, superhero. Um, let's bring somebody up here to compare him to. So here he is next to Agent Anti-Venom and Wolverine. Um, he's definitely taller than Wolverine, as pretty much everybody should be. But uh, no, he's not really any taller than your average figure. He still feels a bit bigger, maybe because he's he's kind of wide. That armor gives him a little bit more girth. But uh, no, he's not overly large. So I really don't have much else to say about this dude. If you're a Silver Samurai fan then I don't think you'll be disappointed because it is a very nice looking figure. But if you're like me and this guy isn't essential to your collection, you probably don't need him. Which is why I'm just getting him now because um, this particular wave of 80th anniversary carded X-Men figures came out a few months ago and Dazzler was the only one that I really wanted so I bought her and I've had her for a while. Silver Samurai, you know, I thought he was kind of cool. I couldn't justify the 30 bucks. But um, I recently picked him up at a, uh, a Black Friday sale and he was marked down with an additional 30% off. Or, so I, I got him for like 16 bucks or something, which was pretty good. So he's definitely worth 16 bucks. 30, I probably would have passed. But uh, yeah, Silver Samurai, not bad. So the last thing I have to show you this week is a new Batman Funko Pop. So... This is another one of those ones that come in the uh, the black packaging, which is nice and striking looking. However, if you're like me and you like consistency, if I was somebody that kept these things in the box, um, I'd be a little annoyed that they switched to black because they were always white before. But uh, yeah, this is like my second or third Batman in the black packaging, and it does look nice with that kind of reflective gold. Yeah, so not bad. Now, if you were just a Batman collector and weren't really into the comic books, just kind of a more general fan, you might be wondering what is the deal with this Batman. He's got this kind of tactical vest on and a weird fur hat like he's from Fargo or something. Well, if you notice there in the corner, it says in very small little font that this is Batman Red Sun. So Red Sun was a comic book series from 2003 that featured Superman, um, and it was an Elseworlds story, so it wasn't in regular continuity. Um, Elseworlds is when they tell stories of, like, kind of a what-if happened, and so that story was about what if Superman had crash-landed in the Soviet Union rather than in America, and how that would have turned out. So there was a whole alternate reality, and this was a Russian Batman from that series. So let's pop him open and take a look at him. 
All right, so here is Red Sun Batman outside of the box. And yeah, he looks pretty cool. Like, uh, And he looks pretty true to how the character looked in the comic book. So his uh, the most defining feature is obviously the hat with the fur on the front of it. And yeah, they do a good job of making it look like an actual leather cap here with the buckles and the wrinkles and the stitching. Uh, it looks really good. I'm pretty impressed by it. And I'd kind of forgotten about the outfit with the uh, the kind of a more winter jacket with some of these pouches and stuff on it. And then he's got this like Batman pickaxe. Um, yeah, and it all comes together really well. They did a really good job of pulling this off. And uh, I'm happy to get this figure because I really liked Red Sun. And a few years back, like 10 years or more, um, DC Direct made some action figures based on that series. But at the time, I decided not to buy them because I thought, well, I don't really need this Russian Batman and Russian Superman. This is kind of a one-off deal. It's not like this is their regular outfit. But then I've regretted it ever since, and they're pretty expensive to buy now. Um, so yeah, I really wish I had gotten this figure. But you'll see here, I have a few um, Elseworlds Batman Pops. Um, I have a collection of Batman Pops within my overall pop collection. Uh, I don't know why I started doing it, but I basically have about 30 different variations of Batman now. I buy them in all the different colors and that sort of thing. And so these are characters. So this is Batman from, um, I blanked for a second, but yeah, this is Batman from Gotham by Gaslight. And this is Batman from Dark Knight Returns. So I think these are all cool looks for Batman. And even though they were only like he, something he only wore for one little storyline, maybe only a single issue, I don't know if I'd want to justify spending 30, 35 bucks to get an action figure of that look, but I can definitely spend the uh, 12 bucks to get a cute little Funko Pop of those looks. So yeah, this is this is kind of a fun alternative to get these outfits um, in pop style. So yeah, I really dig this Red Sun Batman. So that's all the stuff I've gotten in the past couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, so hopefully if I get any of my shipments from either Big Bad or Super 7, I'll have some new stuff to show you and I'll do another video uh, next week. If not, um, I'll at least post something a little closer to the holidays. Um, so anyway, please uh, make sure to come back for those. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please make sure to like it, you know, subscribe to the channel and uh, leave me any comments because I'm always happy to talk toys with you guys. So uh, yeah, until next time. Ciao.